Hello. Hey, you guys. So, uh, the big question today, um, it's funny, I, I, sometimes I can just sit down and, and uh, the topic just comes. And today, today, today was a little different. It was, uh, <clears throat> oh, boys, I've been sitting here for a, a while and, and uh, just to see what would come. And so the question that came is, you know, are you interested in peace of mind? Are you interested in, <clears throat> you know, am I interested? Of course I am, you know, but are you interested in peace of mind? Are you interested in serenity? Are you interested in, in living a, a life of, of um, as, you know, in the experience of nothing missing? Um, and, and I'll just look a little bit on the other side of that. I mean, many of us uh, um, live in complaint, you know, um, it's just an, uh, a natural sense of that there's something wrong. And, and uh, you know, if we wake up in the morning, maybe there's something wrong with, boy, I slept too much or I didn't sleep enough. There's, there's just this ongoing sense that something's missing or something's wrong. And, and uh, so how, how would you like to live in, without that judgment? Like literally without that judgment. So in each moment, it was... Perfect. Wow. And, and uh, you know, I don't know why the example of sleep is coming right now, but uh, um, I guess I read a message with somebody this morning who had woke up at four and, uh, and, and they were like, oh my God, it's four o'clock. I've only been asleep for like three or four hours. I need, you know, and so there was this sense of complaint and, and then she got that, that it was okay to just, uh, just be with that. And, and, uh, you know, and in the beginning, I think as we become, as we start to realize that, that everything is exactly as it's supposed to be, um, there takes, there's a little space between, uh, you know, acknowledging what's happening and realizing that it's perfect. And, and, but eventually it, it crosses over to, there is no thought about that, that the actual complaint is, is gone you know the judgment is gone and and that's the, p the possibility to live in that peace in each moment and and often um you know my videos here i'm talking about recovery or i'm talking about you know uh addiction and, and uh, alcoholism and, and what does the addict really want the addict wants to be free and that's what happens. We, we, you know, we. I remember the first time that I used um, alcohol, and and that was what I got. I got this. Oh my gosh, where have they been hiding this? This sense of freedom. This it was a, it was quite amazing. And the the thing is, it was from outside of me. You know, I had to take something in my body to to achieve this. And 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 uh, and it didn't take long before that that uh, you know really turned on me and. and and, and be, you know, became really obvious that I couldn't do that. I couldn't, you know, and, and I was very fortunate at quite, quite a young age. I, I woke up to um, that, that that was causing a lot of problems in my life. And it wasn't that, that uh, I shifted right away into this piece. I mean, this has been a lifelong kind of search and, and looking often outside of me for it and, and uh, finally finding it. Like Bill had said, and we agnostics deep down inside, every man, woman, and child is this, you know, is this, this sense of a, a higher power, this consciousness of the moment, and and uh, so um, for me it was a, I, I don't think it has to be as long a search <laughs> for 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 everyone. I I kind of um, I don't know. Maybe I mean it doesn't really matter. But maybe my fear was so deep seated, you know. Often uh, I've heard uh, Gabor Mate speak about trauma that you know stuff is like welded in with trauma, and and uh, and unless we really, you know, put a lot of effort into melting those old ideas, to you know, literally melting them with love, melting them with uh, service, uh, um, you know, we could be trapped forever you know, through this lifetime, in, at least in, in, a, in a belief of, of the world as an unsafe place or the belief that something's always wrong, you know, and, uh, in a, in a, you know, living a life of complaint or fear. 
you know, and uh, how would we like to be free of complaint and fear and judgment? I mean, it's possible. That's my, I mean, that's my overall message, really, always, is it's possible to be free and to, to live, you know, in this moment, uh, you know, totally realizing that nothing is missing and uh, nothing is needed. There is nothing coming. There's nothing gone past. It's all here now. And that is possible for every one of us. And, and uh, um, you know, so just watch the mind. The mind wants to say, well, yeah, this has to happen first or that has to happen first or, you know, and, uh, but the answer is, is inside. And so when, it, you know, we do this and we do a little short meditation every day, it, it, and it's to help us to find that space inside, you know. And uh, I was talking with a gentleman last night who sincerely, uh, it was a little later in the evening, but we were talking about his awakening, sincerely desires this, you know, whatever it is that he feels has been missing in his life. And, and he realizes that it hasn't been money because he's, you know, always had lots of that and it hasn't been relationship. He has a, a you know, a, uh, that and he has, he's, he's done very, very well in, in, in this sense. But something just hasn't been there, and, and he's been grumpy and, and uh, you know, feeling incomplete. And, and so we talked a lot about it last night for, for him, that, that um, there is something. And it's not something that we can get by looking for it, but we won't find it if we don't look for it. Isn't that something? You know, so... Um, my message today is, uh, you know, where do we look? Well, we get to know ourselves, know thyself. We recognize that, that we, you know, I think that uh, uh, Dr. David Hawkins really pointed it out really well in his book, Letting Go. Um, you know, we, 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 we see when we're kind of caught in the lower realms, I call them the lower realms of guilt and shame and grief and anger and desire right and, and we're we're down in in uh, uh, those lower realms of pride and and and, uh, and we begin to let them go and hawkins really described us i mean our natural state our natural state is a state of unconditional love and beyond and so as we let these go we but, we, but the trick here is that we, the mind can't manage the awakening so there's a point we go past where um, there is no control. We have to surrender into this, um, into this not knowing. You know, we can't know the next step. There is no knowing. We step into the abyss. We step into love. You know, and and we, the illusion of control is no more. And, and so, you know, practicing is, you know, this meditation, uh, recognizing where we're trying to control out of fear um, allows us to, to move past it, you know, or it to fall away, I guess, is more, you know, it kind of falls away. And as it falls away, we, we are lifted up. You know, Hawkins said we're like a cork and we're weighted down by this, these, um, lower states and uh, and and so we we lifted up i like the analogy that we're we're like a an airplane you know uh, wanting to get you know into the stratosphere <laughs> but we're carrying all this weight of 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 the lower you know of guilt and shame and fear and so we we let it go we just practice letting it go practice letting it go and and uh, and and then, you know, all of a sudden we're off, you know, we're become self-actualizing, you know, it, it keeps, it's moving on its own and it has its own, um, yeah, it's moving on its own. So that, that, that happens and, and, the, and the realization begins to come. It's like, oh, I am that. You know, we, we, we realize that we're not what we thought we were, you know, and I mean, that's the big question last night we talked about, who am I? You know, look at that. Who am I? And and whether you're in recovery or wanting to be in recovery, I mean, it's the same question. Am I really this, uh, you know, fear-filled 
being? Am I, is this really who I am? Is this it? No, you know, this is, you know, on the path, I guess. But it, freedom is available for all of us. So that's my message today. Freedom, you know, is there. What does freedom look like? Well, the peace that passes all understanding, you know, I mean, living like uh, the Dalai Lama talks about compassion, you know, and, and uh, love and tolerance for all, acceptance. These are all, you know, amazing, you, you know, um, attributes of living in freedom. So, that's it. <laughs> We're going to read. Uh, every day I read from this little book. And, and uh, this all started, uh, you guys, uh, back the 1st of May when, you know, we were kind of locked down and, and I thought, well, this is going to last for a couple of months maybe or a couple of weeks. I didn't, you know, I didn't think it would, it would go on this long. And, and uh, I mean, who did? And so I thought, well, I'll, I'll read, you know, um, because I knew there was a lot of people at the time were really seriously locked down and, I, and, and you know, and confused and in pain. And I just wanted to be there this way for you know, people that knew me or people that, that might see this. And, and here it is now, almost a year, that every day we've been reading from this little book and sharing a little message, hopefully, of awakening and love. And uh, and I, I don't know about you, but it's been really good for me. I've grown, I think. I've, you know, it's it, the awakenings have come. And, and uh, so thank you for allowing me to do this on a daily basis. So this is from this little book called The 24-Hour Day Book. It was written in 1954. And, uh, you know, it, it has its shortcomings as like, like everything. It was written by a man and, and uh, uh, his opinions sometimes are there. I don't always agree. <laughs> so, you know, but it is what it is. And uh, if we're still doing this, I'm, I'm thinking about the 1st of May again. I, you know, if I were to continue on uh, for a while, um, I might pick up another book. Um, I was looking at the uh, book called uh, Daily Reflections. Maybe, we'll see. You know, it's a, um, a nice piece that, that, you know, if it covers recovery and, and uh, yeah. So if you have any suggestions though, of a book that you think would be, you'd like me to, you know, start. I, I certainly, when this is done in, uh, in uh, about three weeks, I'll, I'll, let, I'll put this book down. We'll find something else. We'll see what wants to be read, what comes. Do you have any suggestions, please? Okay, in that alcoholic world, it says, one drink always leads to another, and you can't stop until you're paralyzed. And, and I mean, that's not always the case. Um, lots of times uh, the alcoholic will have a couple of drinks to just prove that, you know, that he, he can just have a couple of drinks. <laughs> And, uh, but once we get started, for the most part, that's it. We're, we're off and running. Uh, next morning, it begins all over again. Eventually, end in hospital or jail. You lose your job. Your home is broken up. You're always in a mess. You're on the merry-go-round. You can't get off. You're in a squirrel cage. You can't get out. His question is, am I convinced that the alcoholic world is not a place, a pleasant place for me to live in? Well, I think that any of us that have lived in that alcoholic world know that it's not a pleasant place. It's hell. They, they say that uh, uh, Christians, lots of folks believe in God because they want to go to heaven. But uh, addicts and alcoholics believe in God because they want to get out of hell. <laughs> have you ever heard that? Anyway, meditation for the day. I must learn to accept self-discipline. I must try never to yield one point. I must try never to yield one point that I have already won. Okay. I'm not sure what he means by that, but I must not let myself go in resentment. Okay. I must not let myself go in resentments, hates, fears, pride, lust, or gossip. Yes. Even a discipline keeps me separated from some people. Who are without discipline. Nevertheless, I will carry on. I may have different ways and a different standard of living than some others. I may be uh, actuated by different motives, actuated by different motives than some people. But I will, I will try to live the way I believe God wants me to live, no matter what others say. Amen. You bet. Prayer for the day. I pray that I may 
be an example to uh, others of a better way of living. I pray that I may carry on in the spirit of uh, in the spirit of hindrances, in spite of hindrances. Okay, that's right. Make us stronger, don't they? All right, so that's it. April the eleventh, and we've done our little reading and chat. So we're gonna do like a just a short um, three minute sit. Like, you know, that's it. I, all I'm trying to do, or, you know, my aim here is to help you have the experience of what does it mean to meditate or to sit for three minutes. Everybody can do this, right? You can do this. So we're going to just sit for three minutes and drop inside. Just be here now. Find that peace just for three minutes. So are you, are you ready? And hopefully you're in a comfortable spot. You're, you know, if you're driving, pull over. Actually, a friend of mine uh, sent me pictures of where she pulled over the other day. She was driving, and she got to this part in the video and, and, and pulled over. So if you're driving, pull over, and uh, just close your eyes. We're going to drop, you know, inside. It's funny that... As time goes on, we realize that inside, outside, it's kind of the same because we, we're one with all of it, but that will come. That will come. It's maybe not here, um, maybe not here yet, but it'll come. You'll recognize that. that <coughs> there is no separation. And, uh, but for now, then, let's just think of going inside, dropping in into the now, into, you know, for the sake of this moment, into our body, if you will, to our heart. We often use the heart as our metaphor for where, you know, this love is located, where this oneness is located. Just come into your breath. Uh, a couple of deep breaths. There we go. Her body just kind of relaxes and the tension flows out our shoulders, We're totally here right now, if there are any sounds around, just include them, just include the sound of my voice, it's being part of your quiet time, if thoughts come, just gently, gently let them go, you can pick them up later, just be here now, in your breath, in your body. No tomorrow, no past, no future, nothing coming, no next. This is it. We are here now. Everything we ever needed is in this moment right now. Nothing else is needed. We're free in this moment.
There we go. So I'm just going to leave you. You can stay in this space as long as you want. Thank you for joining. A couple of reminders on Monday evening coming up. We have a sharing group at 7. You're welcome to join us on Zoom for that. I'd love it if you'd subscribe to us on YouTube. <laughs> love you guys. Thank you.